Hello, so today I'm going to do a review of this. It's a Chinese GM100A personal decimeter, and I'm pretty sure it uses a Geiger Muller tube in there rather than the little sort of semiconductor type um, detector to work. So let's turn it on. And the instructions are all in Chinese, uh, so obviously what I'm going to do is just basically from what I can understand of playing around with it, give you a quick tutorial on it. So I'll zoom out a little bit. So basically this is designed so you can clip it on your belt if you want to. There's a little flashing light at the top which I think starts flashing more frequently when there's radiation detected. Annoyingly I don't think you can have it click with every um, radiation count if you want to but you can personalise when the alarms sound which is good because some counters don't let you do that. So what I'll try and do, it takes one uh, AA battery that just goes in there, uh, simple enough get that off with one hand if not no it's just it takes a double a there anyway it's quite tight you can if you put a rechargeable battery in there you can charge it via USB-C and um, its actual detector is marked on there somewhere there it is the actual detector tube is there um, so under this sort of bit but there so um, if you're putting it up to something to try and take a measurement you want to do it there but if, it's basically just designed to give you a general sort of radiation reading if it's on your belt or in a pocket or something. So there's a couple of different modes. So as you can see at the moment, it's in micro sievert mode. Um, one of the things I'll show you in the menu but not go into because there's some of the functions that I can just explain quicker than going through the menu because the menu's a bit weird on this and I'll try and explain how it works because it took me a while to figure it out. So in the readings, you can have um, obviously micro sieverts or millisieverts per hour depending on how high your dose is. And that's obviously the mode it's designed to running. So in the moment it's saying we're at 0 0.41. That seems a bit high, but this works in two modes. It's going down a bit. Um, basically how this works is you can have it in fast detection mode or slow detection mode. Fast detection mode is more um, responsive, as in if you walk into a radioactive area, it will sound the alarm quicker because it just basically calculates a dose faster. But slow mode is the more accurate one. So, say I have this turned on in this room, for example, if I had slow mode on it, it would probably be equaling more to 0 0.2, um, which would be the actual reading I'd be expecting in here. But at the moment, I think it's going to take a while to go down to that. So, um, basically, you have a left and right to go through the menu, or up and down. So, you can also have it in milli Röntgen per hour, although that's actually rad or rem, as in Röntgen equivalent man radiation absorbed dose because it's just to a factor of 10 of the um, sievert dose. So it's, um, you know, but you can have it in either reading you want. And you've also got the counts per second. So obviously that's, counts per second vary completely on the Geiger Muller tube in a counter, but counts per second is better if you like looking at beta radiation, but I just prefer looking at it in dose equivalent, because that just gives me a rough idea of how dangerous something is. And then you've also got a thing which will show you um, how much you've been exposed to since you last reset it or had it auto reset so as you might be able to see here um i've been given quite a high dose and that's because um it wasn't me wearing it it was me testing it against some things the other day to see how well it responded so as you can see that i've actually apparently absorbed about a year's worth of radiation 1.6 millisieverts um in sort of you know one day of having it on um and apparently it thinks at one point I was exposed to 42 millisieverts. But again, it wasn't that high. Again, this is one of those detectors where there are flaws of it. Um, but the flaws in this are kind of in the error I prefer, which I'll go into more in depth. But it's kind of one of those ones where the counter doesn't shut off if exposed to a lot of radiation. It just overestimates it or underestimates it, but at least warns you you're in high radiation field, which is always better than the counter that just tells you, no, it's fine. Um, there's also one where it shows you how high things are, so that's one of just those sort of bar graphs that will go up and down depending on obviously your current radiation dose. And then we're back to micro sieverts an hour. So let me show you the menu quickly. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit more on this and then um, go through the functions. So on and off is obviously straightforward. That is just on and off for the counter. So if we press the middle button, that's the menu, then you go up and down the menu using this. So sample mode is to go into um, if it's fast response or slow response, but accurate response. 
alarm is um, that way. So alarm is basically where you can set your own alarm threshold. So I've set that quite high. So if I put it near a sample, it doesn't just randomly start sounding the alarm. Calibration, I think, is the thing you're meant to do um, every now and then when you turn it on. So when you're in a low radiation area, you calibrate it. So basically, it just knows that background levels are background levels, if that makes sense. Um, but when I turned it on, I was in a low radiation area, so it should be pretty good. Um, but obviously the idea is you don't calibrate one of these while you're inside, um, say, a nuclear disaster area. Dose is um, basically, I think, shows your um, full dose so far. And I think you can also set dose alarms on there as well as the alarm screen. Let's just go into it have a look. So to go into something, you have to hold the up button down, which is a tick. So yeah, oh, dose, sorry, is how long till it resets the dose. So you can manually clear it on here or you can set it to clear after a certain amount of time. So let me hold this one to go back. Language, uh, that's very straightforward. Chinese or English. Display, I think that's the brightness. Let's just double check. Yeah, it's how long it stays lit up. So that's set to two minutes. Contrast level. And lightened, so that's not very good English, but I'm assuming that's um, always stay on. Um, for the other sort of one. Anyway, let's um, back out of these. So that's all your menu options. Now let's test it against some things. So I said, um, that is a bit higher than it should be in here. So it's not pinpoint accurate to say the level of something like a Radioscan 101A is or one of the sort of good uh, Ecotech Geigers. But it's, it's not far off, especially because this is a meter that gives you a much bigger um, range of sort of readings. So, um... Yeah, anyway, let's let's actually show this thing working uh, with a few different samples. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get my Radioscan 101A out so we can put them both next to each other and see what they both estimate um, a similar item is in terms of beta gamma. So you get sort of um, an equivalent reading just to get a rough idea of how accurate this thing is. Okay, so here are both detectors. So as you can see, the Radioscan is about the radiation level I was expecting, mid-20s. Although it's a bit higher than all, but that's probably just because I've got my samples ready to show now, so they're just off frame. So we'll start off small and go bigger. So obviously there's already a bit of an error between them, but that's not too important. Let's see when there's a sample, if they close in on each other. So the first thing we'll try is a thorium lamp mantle. So what I'll do is to make it as fair as possible, um, we'll just put the thing between the two counters and sort of just lay each of them on there and that should give a roughly similar number because obviously bear in mind the radius scan is um, quite a sensitive alpha thing right and I'll put both to um, the Ronken ones so they're similar uh, so just one second so obviously that's in micro Ronkens at the moment but 200 micro Ronkens um, is basically uh, 0.2 millironcon isn't it and that's gone to 0.215 millironcon so that's almost exactly the same now actually they're both 2.21 essentially which is interesting so that is actually very similar now they're actually next to a source i'm quite impressed by that that's gone up a bit now but yeah again one of them might be a bit more sensitive one might have a bit more background added to it but both those are very close together, which is actually quite impressive. Right, they've, the screen's turned off as usual with these things. But yeah. But yeah, they're, they're fairly similar. And obviously with this one, if I put that a bit more centrally on, the reading might be a bit higher. And again, it depends how sensitive they are to beta with the little covers on and everything. Right, so now we've tried that. What else do I have that uh, is a lower power sample? Let's try um, a proper cesium-137 check source. I'll have to put them on each one individually. So there you go. That's a proper sort of safe check source. So we'll put it down facing this way. I think that's a slightly thinner way. Put this on here first. We'll see what this one reads and then we'll flip it over for the other one. So we're looking at about 0.3, 0 0.4 milli gun on that one. Right now... I'll have to hold this like this against the uh, sensor here so it's even. But that should go up in a second on this one. It says, what, 116 at the moment. But like I said, with this one it's got a smaller sort of beta window on it. So 
I have found when playing with this one that you have to be um, so that's saying uh, 1.51 microsieverts 1.72 tell you what, because this is better set up for microsieverts I'm just going to set this one to microsieverts a moment One moment while I set this one up. Dose unit SV, that's what I want. Alright, okay, so that's in microsieverts now. So now if we set the other one back to microsieverts. So that's saying 2.7, 2.8. Then if we put this one here, let me just try it not directly on that bit, but just underneath like that. See what that says. But again, like I said, the problem with these is obviously it depends on the size of the detection window on a lot of these things because um, if you have, say, a beta detector but it's only got a tiny beta window, you can't have as much allowed through because obviously that gives off both beta and gamma on this. But yeah, now you see they're getting closer together again. Okay, so now let's get something a bit more spicy, if you want to use that word. We'll use an old Soviet compass which has radium paint on. So put this one here. That's actually not that active according to this. 0 0.3. You can obviously tell there is uh, radiation coming off of it, but that's actually um, a lot less dose than I thought was coming off of that. Anyway, that's so what 0 0.42, 0 0.43 it seems to have stopped on. So now let's put this one there. Again, I suppose it depends sometimes if they're actually um, matching up exactly with where the paint is, because sometimes if you've obviously got. So that's gone to 0 0.5, so if it goes to about 0 0.4, they'll be pretty close again. Yeah, so they're not too far off. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you what happens when you actually get quite a strong source and you get basically both the things um, trying to, you know, take measurements from things that are fairly, um, you know, actually radioactive to see how well they work when there's something quite strong next to them. Well, I thought before I get a proper check source out, let's actually just see what an old aircraft radium dye would do from a World War II British bomber, so it's properly sealed in its old housing. Like I said, don't open these up, because then you get the radium gassing out as well. So, just to show you what the radius scan says on this with the cover on. About 92, or about mid-80s to 90 microsieverts per hour. Probably depends whereabouts on the case you've got it, but quite a high reading. Now let's try and get this one in the exact same space where its thing is probably against the same bits. Get the screen back on. So I have to give this one a moment to actually adjust. But this is now saying 126 microsieverts, so it might even be more sensitive. It probably just depends where you've got it positioned. But as you can see, um, regardless, this is not struggling with a... Um, beta and gamma source like radium, well that gives off alpha as well, but this won't be able to pick that up. So anyway, as you can see, this um, certainly is picking up that there's an aircraft dial here. Right, let's do our one last thing, I'll put that face down so it's um, exposing the least amount possible. <coughs> let's get out my scariest check source, many of you will know what it is. From a Soviet decimeter. And here we have it safely sealed behind resin but we have the um, sort of Eye of Sauron source, a DP2 um, source. So what we're going to do is keep it like that there, and then we're going to first try this one on it. And with the back cover on, it's got to 4.5 millisieverts on this one, and I think it'll get one Röntgen, or sorry, like 10 millisieverts if I do it like that. Yep, greater than uh, 10 millisieverts, so stronger than one Röntgen. Right, that's, let's do this quickly, as I said, that's, that's enough for that um, one. Now let's try this one, because this what impressed me of this is it didn't overload. So, 
There we get my alarm sounding. Currently saying 730 microsieverts, and that will get stronger in a moment. Or it should do at least. It did the other day when I gave it a quick test. Let me just try changing the position of it. I'll put it there so my hands aren't near it. Oh, there we go. It went to millisieverts for a second, then it's gone back to microsieverts. Right, still counting. Yeah, I think in that position it can't get higher, but what I did find I could do is to get this source, I don't want to touch it for very long, and pop it under the, um, using the little clip on the back, pop it literally onto the Geiger Muller tube. So let me quickly do that and then pop it back in frame so I'm not holding it for very long. There we go. So 1.8 millisieverts per hour it should go up in a minute, unless I'm overloading the tube. But like I said, even if you overload the beta radiation sort of tube on this through saturation, it at least seems to keep giving you the alarm. It doesn't just do the thing where it basically um, shuts off like some cheap Geigers do. I did get a much more accurate reading from that the other day. So I don't know why at the moment it doesn't want to give such a good reading. But... Give me a moment. Let me just try putting it there like that. Right, it's counting again, so that might give you a more accurate one this time. There we go, five millisieverts, six millisieverts. And it's gone to, what's that, 13 millisieverts. And it maxes out something like, what's that, 30 millisieverts an hour? Uh, so yeah, it, it can go pretty damn high on this. I think, funnily enough, this is meant to go to about, it's gone to 42 now. Um, which isn't as high as 42. Uh, that's it, false reading. But I think this basically is meant to go over 3.6 Ronkgen levels of radiation. So, you know, about 4 Ronkgen, 40 odd millisieverts. Which is pretty damn good for a little counter like this. So let's put these scary sources away and then finish the video off. So in summary, I think this is a very good little detector. Again, I've not tested it enough yet to know how long a, br a brand new AA battery works. With most things like this, I'd actually recommend you get a really good quality rechargeable AA battery and then basically just, um, you know, as you um, use it, charge it up, if that makes sense. Um, you know, whenever you've got a free plug socket, just use that to recharge the batteries inside. Um, but yeah, it seems quite a good little thing. Like saying, you can personalise your alarms, which is good. You can have it vibrate as well as beep when there's an alarm on. So if it's in your pocket and you've got headphones on or something, you could feel it going off. Um, you can have it in both micro sieverts or just let's just say sievert readings or um, like rad readings, rem readings, which is pretty good, as well as CPS. So it's quite customizable. Um, and as I said, it seems to max out at pretty high levels, even if the accuracy isn't very good at those levels, um, which most Geiger counters commercially don't do. Like I said, the Radius Scan, this is a very good Geiger counter, but it maxes out at one Ronkgen or. Um, 10 millisievert, um, basically where this thing seems to go much, much higher than that. Now I think the standard therapy, because I had the therapy plus, not the regular therapy. If I remember right, the regular therapy can go up to really high readings, but again, it's the more the higher it goes, the less accuracy you get with most of these. You always want an ionization chamber for um you know taking these readings, because for example, that um DP2 source I've got inside an ionization chamber. I get the realistic reading from that but with a lot of these sort of smaller counters they can sometimes think that's insanely you know more dangerous than it is because again they're using a cesium equation on strontium 90 not that you don't want to be anywhere near that thing um and obviously like i said before it's really scary that things like that actually turned up in landfills in eastern europe uh where the radiation sources weren't removed from them but the point is that you know like we said 
at lower radiation levels, this seems very close to the radius scan, especially when you mine the sum off if it thinks your background levels are slightly higher. But when it's next to a check source, they're very, very close, um, especially the lower level ones. And then obviously, when it gets more radioactive, you're probably less worried about the entire accuracy of a reading. You're probably just more worried how dangerous is this and how fast do I need to get out of the area. So yeah, the Chinese GM100A, probably the best Geiger counter I've seen out of China yet, because it's a lot more compact than some of the others, a lot more personalised, and gives very good readings. But in my next Geiger counter video, I'll be covering a not-so-good Chinese Geiger counter, although it's still alright, um, the BR9B, I think it's called, um, which, compared to this thing, is junk, even though it's not that bad as its own unit, but this thing is very good.